Hatakol, Wikipedia Audio Hatakol was a patent medicine marketed as a vitamin supplement. Its principal attraction, however, was that it contained 12% alcohol, which made it quite popular in the dry counties of the southern United States. It was the product of four-term Louisiana State Senator Dudley J. LeBlanc, a Democrat from Arath in Vermilion Parish in southwestern Louisiana. He was not a medical doctor, nor a registered pharmacist, but had a strong talent for self-promotion. Time magazine once described him as a stem-winding salesman who knows every razzle-dazzle switch in the pitchman's trade. In 1943, LeBlanc conceived the idea that became Haidekol in New Orleans, when he had persistent pain in his foot and elsewhere. He asked a doctor to give him medication for pain, then he found that what the doctor gave him was a B vitamin elixir, which he proposed to duplicate with a few changes and sell to a mass consumer market. LeBlanc said that his research showed that multivitamins taken collectively would yield greater results than a single vitamin for a specific problem. The label on the tonics bottle clearly stated that the recommended dosage was to be taken, in a half glass of water after meals and before retiring. However, some pharmacies in dry counties were known to sell it by the shot glass and at least one bar in New Orleans French Quarter was known to sell a tassel cocktail with Haidekol as an ingredient. In Northbrook, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, sales of Haidekol were limited to liquor stores. Origins LeBlanc created the name Haidekol from his former business, the Happy Day Company, maker of Happy Day Headache Powders and Dixie Dew Cough Syrup. Happy became Ha, Days became Day, Company became CO, and his own last name LeBlanc provided the L. Hence the created name was Haidekol. However, when LeBlanc was asked about the name, he would often joke, Well, I had a call at something. A two-page advertisement for Haidekol appeared in the centerfold of the 1951 edition of Grier's Almanac, an annual publication marketed to farmers in the southern USA. The ad's headline read, Don't be satisfied with symptomatic relief. It's possible to relieve the cause of your ailments when lack of vitamins B1, B2, iron and niacin cause stomach disturbances gas, heartburn, indigestion, nagging aches and pains, and certain nervous disorders. The ad continued with testimonials and a glowing plug for Senator LeBlanc, stressing the curative powers of Haidekol for a number of ailments, due to lack of vitamins B1, B2, iron and niacin. A capsule version of Haidekol was briefly produced consisting solely of a B vitamin and mineral mixture. LeBlanc promoted the tonic as a dietary supplement instead of a medicine, stating that it was, formulated as an aid to nature in rebuilding the pep, strength and energy of buoyant health when the system is deficient in the vitamins and minerals found in this tonic. But Time magazine described it as a murky brown liquid that tastes something like bilge water and smells worse. The American Medical Association was likewise not as appreciative. In an official press release in 1951, the AMA stated, it is hoped that no doctor will be uncritical enough to join in the promotion of Haidekol. It is difficult to imagine how one could do himself or his profession greater harm from the standpoint of the abuse of the trust of a patient suffering from any condition. Hatacol is not a specific medication. It is not even a specific preventive measure. LeBlanc flooded the airwaves with testimonials to the powers of the seemingly miraculous brown liquid and turned the jingle called Hatacol Boogie into a popular recording. 
promotional items included various flyers, signs, and clocks, a Captain Hatacole comic book, t-shirts, lipstick, an almanac, plastic thimbles printed with the Hatacole logo, water pistols, and cowboy-style holsters, glasses used for taking the diluted mixture, and a stamped metal token redeemable for 25 cents towards the purchase of any bottle of Hatacole. These items, along with the Hatacole bottles and the boxes they were packaged in, are now much sought after items, and fetch high prices among collectors of southern memorabilia and medical quackery. In 1950, LeBlanc offered a handsome financial incentive to anyone who could provide him with a parrot that was trained to say Polly wants Hatacole. The parrot was to be exhibited at promotions. The offer included the following. The owner of such a bird, if selected, will be given a reasonable compensation on a contract basis. The owner and the parrot will travel in a limousine with the parrot's name engraved in gold on the door and will stay only at the best hotels. The parrot will be furnished a gold cage and its life insured. The parrot will visit large drug stores perform at conventions, etc., and may be presented on radio and television. The L.E. Blanc Corporation has a triple A high credit rating. LeBlanc was an entrepreneur in other areas too, but it is Hatacole that made him famous outside Louisiana. For his Hatacole Goodwill Caravan touring shows, LeBlanc brought in Hollywood celebrities, including such luminaries as Roy Acuff, Milton Burley, Lucille Ball, Minnie Pearl, Kanae Boswell, Mickey Rooney, Bob Hope, Cesar Romero, Dorothy Lamour, Carmen Miranda, George Burns and Gracie Allen, Judy Garland, Jack Dempsey, Chico Marx, Hank Williams, and James Cagney to help him market the product. He also sponsored a separate touring show featuring notable jazz and blues musicians to attract black customers. Admission to the Hatacole Gala was two Hatacole box stops for adults, one for children. Considering that the 8-ounce bottle cost $1.25 and the family size 24-ounce bottle cost $3.50 each during the late 1940s, this was not cheap. Sales of the tonic at the shows were brisk. According to musician Weldon Big Bill Lister, who performed in the Hatacole Caravan, the only way you could get into that show was with a Hatacole box stop, and believe me, we played to crowds of 10, 12,000 people a night. Back in those days there wasn't many auditoriums that would hold that many people. We played ballparks race tracks, you know anywhere where they had enough big bleachers to handle those kind of crowds. The final show was on September 17, 1951. Paul Schrader wrote a script entitled Eight Scenes from the Life of Hank Oliams, which has not yet been produced. It includes a sequence on his performances with the Hatacole Caravan. Dosage in a 15-month period ending in March 1951, LeBlanc sold more than $3,600,000 worth of the tonic. In another six months, after LeBlanc sold his interest of the LeBlanc Corporation to investors for $8,200,000, the enterprise collapsed under the weight of debtors. It was discovered all too late that LeBlanc was spending more for advertising by that point than he was taking in as receipts, had concealed both $2 million in unpaid bills and a $656,151 tax debt, and another $2 million, listed in the ledgers as accounts receivable, were cases of the tonic out on consignment, much of which was being shipped back. In an official court statement, the Federal Trade Commission stated that the publicity behind the tonic was false, 
misleading and deceptive in representing the nostrum as an effective treatment and cure for scores of ailments and diseases. The ensuing bad publicity played a contributing factor to LeBlanc losing a gubernatorial election in 1952 and effectively halting his future statewide electoral chances. Martin Gardner S. In the Name of Science mentions an interview that LeBlanc gave on Groucho Marx's S. radio program, when Groucho asked him what Haidekole was good for, LeBlanc gave an answer of startling honesty. It was good, the senator said, for $5 million for me last year. In 1954, after the Haidekole fiasco, LeBlanc tried to re-enter the patent medicine market with a lemon-flavored non-alcoholic vitamin tonic named Carrion. Unlike Haidekole, it quickly vanished from production. According to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, there were two attempts to revive Haidekole. The first was in 1987 by Edmondson Enterprises of Shreveport, Louisiana. The second attempt was in 1997 by O Pharmaceuticals of Tyler, Texas. Both attempts to revive the brand were unsuccessful. In 1976, Hadacol multivitamins were distributed by the Atlanta, Georgia-based Hadacol Corporation in an unsuccessful attempt to revive the brand name. Promotion The Hadacol Caravan Downfall In popular culture Listen to